Organize Me Radio, Episode 3, Decluttering Basics. I'm Naima Ford-Goldson. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will be talking about decluttering basics. Now, this is what most people want to hear. How in the world do I get rid of my clutter? How do I keep it gone? And how do I make my space pretty? All right. So I'm going to share all of that with you today. So listen up. What is the most cluttered area in your home? Think about it. What I find when I go into different people's homes is that their living spaces are cluttered. Their kids' rooms, mostly closets, their garages, their basements, their home offices, and their attics. So just think to yourself, what's the most cluttered space and where should you start? So a few years ago, I created a method called the sort, store, and style method to getting things organized. Now, it's a three-step process. Step one is the sort process. So what I like to do is create three labels, keep, donate, and toss. And then I will situate those around the room so that they're not too close to each other because you don't want any of the piles to get intermixed. Now, in the keep pile, you're going to add the things that you need, things that you have a use for, maybe that you have a fond memory, something that you're just not going to get rid of. Donate would be items you no longer have a need for and that you haven't used within one year. I repeat, items that you haven't used within one year. One more time for everyone in the back. Items that you haven't used within one year, donate those items as long as they're in good condition. The reason I say one year is because we go through all the seasons depending on where you live. And if you haven't had the opportunity to wear something within that first year, chances are you probably won't wear it. Now, that doesn't include something like a suit that you might not wear all the time or a formal evening gown. Now the issue arises if you don't have many places to wear an evening gown and you have about 20. With that, you can definitely donate some of them. Now the items that you'll put in the toss pile will be things that are broken, things that are dingy, or have holes. If it's something you wouldn't want to receive from someone else, don't donate it, just throw it away. During the sort process, make sure to ask yourself a few questions. Have I worn it within one year? Do my clothes represent who I am today? Do you have a cheerleading uniform from high school and now you're 45? If so, it's time to let that go. Do my clothes fit me? Do you have a pair of jeans that you loved 10 years ago, but you haven't worn them since? If so, it's time for that to go. And it's also important to make sure you don't feel intimidated by the sorting process because it will definitely intimidate you, especially if it's been a long time since you've actually decluttered. Maybe you've never decluttered. Just make sure not to get overwhelmed because you will have big piles of things and it will look worse before it gets better. So just stay in a mindset where... You don't feel overwhelmed and just take it slowly and just do a little bit at a time. So here are some tips to help you with sorting. Start small. You can start with the coat closet or you can start under a cabinet or maybe a drawer in the kitchen. I find that if you go ahead and start in a small area, the little victories will help give you momentum to keep going so you can tackle a bigger project, like maybe the garage or a basement. Organize in short sessions. I can't stress this enough. Do not spend the entire day organizing. I repeat, do not spend the entire day organizing. When I work with clients, I typically do three to five hour sessions. I don't like going over five hours. And the reason for this is because at the end of five hours, you're typically burned out and you might not want to continue on with getting everything organized, especially if you're doing this by yourself. If this is your first time decluttering, 
build up to longer periods of time. So start with 30 minutes. Then the next time, an hour. Then the next time, maybe an hour and a half. You'll want to single out items during the process. So let's say you have this huge, beautiful closet. Who wouldn't want a huge, beautiful closet? However, there are things everywhere. There are clothes on the floor, scarves, handbags, shoes. So if you don't know where to start, just start with one item. So perhaps you gather all the shoes and put them in a pile. Next, grab all the bags and put them in a pile. Grab all your scarves, put them in a pile. If you have jewelry, grab all the jewelry, put that in a pile. And then you should be left with clothes. So we'll gather up all the clothes and then we'll put them in a pile. Of course, there are other things that you do put in your closet, miscellaneous items. So just make sure to sort like items together. And then once you have that, you'll be able to go through everything and continue on with the keep, donate, and toss. One of the most important things when the sorting process is completed is to make sure you remove the trash and the donations immediately. I repeat, remove the trash and the donations immediately. The reason you want to get the donations and the trash out immediately is because you don't wanna risk pulling something out of the donations box after you already decided to part ways with it. Once you decide to part ways with something, part ways and be done with it. Step two is store. So all the things that you've decided to keep, now it's time to find a place for them. Ben Franklin said it best, a place for everything, everything in its place, which means every single item that you have should have a home. Why should every item have a home? Because when you're looking for it, you'll know exactly where to find it. And when you're done with it, you'll know exactly where to put it away. So some of my favorite items to use for storing things are baskets, bins, and boxes. And I love having shelves. Shelves are very helpful whether they're built in or whether it's freestanding because it utilizes the vertical space on a wall and you can store your bins, boxes, and baskets on there. Now, if you're the type of person where things are out of sight, out of mind, you'd really benefit by having clear containers. The clear container will enable you to see exactly what is being stored in the box. If you like for things to look pretty and aesthetics is a big thing for you, which it is for me, using a decorative basket is helpful with a cute little label. So if you already have shelves, Find homes for all your items on those shelves. And of course, you wanna store things where they make sense as well. For example, storing your oven mitts near the oven. Make sure your items are neatly placed, whether it's on a shelf, in a drawer, or in a cabinet. Sometimes during this process, you'll realize you don't have enough storage space. So you're gonna have to figure out what you can do to maximize your space. So that might mean reaching out to a closet company and building a custom space getting a custom closet, getting a custom office built. If you're a builder, hey, have at it. Go ahead and do it yourself if you're a DIYer. Perhaps adding a wardrobe to your room if you don't have enough closet space, but you do have extra wall space to put a freestanding solution there. Labels, I love labels. They are very helpful if you have multiple people using the same space. Now, if you have kids and they can't read yet, then perhaps getting labels that have pictures on them will be helpful. Using labels are very helpful to ensure that everything is maintained and stays organized. So there are so many different types of labels that you can use. My personal favorite label is a bin clip that you can get from the container store because it just slides right onto a basket. But there are other labels like self-adhesive labels. There are labels that are magnetic. There are labels that are built into organizers. So just find what works for you. But labels will definitely really help maintain that level of organization that you're obviously striving for. An important thing when it comes to storing your clothes would be folding. How do you fold your clothes? Be mindful of how you're folding clothes and perhaps stack your clothes instead of laying them on top of each other when they're in drawers so then you can see exactly what it is that you have. Some of the items that I like to fold are short sleeve shirts, 
pants, undergarments, pajamas, and linens. If you store different types of items in drawers, using a drawer divider will help build a separation of space. So let's recap here. You've gone through the decluttering process, so now you have all the items that you plan to keep. Then you found a home for everything. So now everything is in its place. The last thing you wanna do is style the space. I like to make spaces pretty so you won't want to declutter the space again, right? I love an aesthetically pleasing space. Many people do. Many people like to look at a space and see how beautiful and neat and clean that space is. So to do that, make sure your space is clean. Make sure it's free of dust, dirt, and debris. Add decor. Pick a few pieces from around the house or buy new decor. There's nothing wrong with adding elements to your space to make it feel more warm and welcoming. And sometimes after the process, you realize you just need a redesign. Make your space work for you. Don't work around it. Consider your needs and your wants for the space. So I moved into my current home in 2017 and I inherited a horrible master closet. Now, this closet is a shared closet with my husband, which I wasn't used to because at our last house, we had our own closet. So I'm already in shock that I have to share a closet with him. But this closet just did not function for either of us. And In this closet, the rod for the long hanging items was so far out of my reach. My husband could barely reach it and he's 6'3". So what we decided to do, or what I decided to do, was design myself a new closet. So now my closet works for me. I have just enough long hanging space, I have enough double hanging space, and I even have shelves for my shoes. I managed to fit two drawers in there, and a hamper, and I love the closet. What I also like about having my custom closet is that it helps my husband also keep everything in order. So when the space is pretty, it really does make you want to keep that space pretty. So you won't keep things on the floor and you'll put things back on the hangers and you'll just put things back where they belong. So when it comes to style, I like to keep things simple, clean, and functional. So choose a color scheme. In my closet, I decided to go with gray and gold. So the main portion is gray and all of the hardware is gold. The closet rods, the valet rods, the hooks, all of those things are gold. And I gave an accent color on the drawer and the hamper face. You can even change up a space by painting one wall, painting a signature wall, or adding wallpaper. Wallpaper is big now. Put wallpaper on one wall. Let's say you have a small pantry. Add wallpaper or a beautiful shelf liner, and that will just completely change up your space. And one thing I love doing in my house is just adding flowers. Flowers to me will just soften up a space and just make it look fun and feminine and pretty. So now I'm going to give you a few tips to keep the clutter away. Number one, go through your mail right away and toss anything that isn't important. So what I like to do after I get the mail is just look through things as I'm walking back to the house and toss all the things that I know that I don't need. We get so much junk mail. Don't let that junk mail make it into your house. Number two, when sorting through a pantry, remove all expired items first. You'd be surprised at how many expired bottles of seasoning and canned goods I come across. Tip number three, write a to-do list. I love writing lists for every single thing. So when you are starting with the process of decluttering, make sure you write a list of all the places that you'd like to declutter and then just check everything off the list. Tip number four, use hangers that are the same type and color to give your closet an organized feel. That is a quick fix to make your space look organized. Ditched the multicolored hangers. Number five, organize hanging clothes by type, 
and color. So you don't necessarily have to organize by the colors of the rainbow. If you did, that would be Roy G. Biv, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That's what you would follow. But what I like to do with my clients, which makes it easier, is organizing light to dark or dark to light. And the final tip, sort through clothes yearly. Like I said earlier, if you haven't worn it or used it within one year, it's time for it to go. And that, my friends, is how I stay organized. And I hope my tips will ensure that you will have an organized 2020. Thank you so much for joining me today and make sure you follow me on all social media platforms. You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, and YouTube at Restore Order Professional Organizing. You can find me on Twitter at Restore Order and on Instagram at Neems underscore Organizes. And remember, get organized, go further. You're listening to Organize Me Radio. I'm Naima Ford-Goldson. 